Please. Yeah. Tonight's Mass is being celebrated for the happy repose of the soul of Helen Clissartz. All peoples, clap your hands. Cry to God, God, with shouts of joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, and through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed of Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant we pray that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. When David and Saul approached on David's return after slaying the Philistine, women came out from each of the cities of Israel to meet King Saul, singing and dancing with tambourines, joyful songs and sistrums. The women played and sang. Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. Saul was very angry and resentful of the song, for he thought, they gave David ten thousands, but only thousands to me. All that remains for him is the kingship. And from that day on, Saul was jealous of David. Saul discussed his intention of killing David with his son Jonathan and with all his servants. But Saul's son Jonathan, who was very fond of David, told him, My father Saul is trying to kill you. Therefore, please be on your guard tomorrow morning. Get out of sight and remain in hiding. I, however, will go out and stand beside my father in the countryside where you are and will speak to him about you. If I learn anything, I will let you know. Jonathan then spoke well of David to his father Saul, saying to him, Let not your majesty sin against his servant David, for he has committed no offense against you, but has helped you very much by his deeds. When he took his life in his hands and slew the Philistine, and the Lord brought about a great victory for all of Israel through him, you were glad to see it. Why then should you become guilty of shedding innocent blood by killing David without cause? Saul heeded Jonathan's plea and swore, As the Lord lives, he shall not be killed. So Jonathan summoned David and repeated the whole conversation to him. Jonathan then brought David to Saul, and David served him as before. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In God I trust, I shall not fear. In God I trust, I shall not fear. Have mercy on me, O God, for men trample upon me. All the day they press their attack against me. My adversaries trample upon me all the day. Yes, many fight against me. In God I trust, I shall not fear. My wanderings you have counted. My tears are stored at your, in your flask. Are they not recorded in your book? Then do my enemies turn back when I call upon you. In God I trust, I shall not fear. Now I know that God is with me, in God, in, whom, in whose promise I glory. In God I trust without fear. What can flesh do against me? In God I trust, I shall not fear. I am bound, O God, by vows to you. Your thank offerings I will, I will fulfill. For you have rescued me from death my feet too from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. In God, in God I trust, I shall not fear. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. 
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus withdrew toward the sea with his disciples. A large number of people followed him from Galilee and then from Judea. Hearing what he was doing, a large number of people came to him also from Jerusalem, from Edoma, from beyond the Jordan, and from the neighborhoods of Tyre and Sidon. And he told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, so that they would not crush him. He had cured many, and as a result, those who had diseases were pressing upon him to touch him. And whenever unclean spirits saw him, they would fall down before him and shout, you are the Son of God. He warned them sternly not to make him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. We've been listening to the first reading for the last few days from Samuel's book. And we're to see about the interaction of, of, of David from a young man, and up and now he's with his confrontations with the present King Saul. And we know that David had written psalms, and in the psalms we go through many different emotions. And in today's psalm we have a little bit of what he was going through, because you know he had done what he thought was right, and then he, uh, all of a sudden, King Saul becomes jealous of him and wants to kill him. What does he lament in the psalm? He says in the psalm, he says, I know that God is with me. So even though his enemies are trying to get him, even though he knows he's surrounded by danger, he knows that God is with me. The thing is, because the scriptures are the living word of God, do we believe this? Do we believe that God is with me? You know, it's God with me today. Today's gospel provides us with a little bit of the clues as to try to figure out how do we know that God is with us? We have people that are pressing in on Jesus. They are seeking to touch him, even just to touch his cloak. They had heard so many stories of Jesus' healing, and they sought out his healing as well. And Jesus responds, healing physically and healing spiritually. So how can we draw near to Jesus today, just as so many people were drawing near to him in the gospel today? And of course we know. The first place to go is we go to the sacraments, right? Okay, when we think about receiving that kind of healing, perhaps we think of the sacraments of healing that we have. The two in particular are the anointing of the sick and the sacrament of reconciliation. In the sacrament of the anointing of the sick, Jesus offers his presence which can heal and strengthen and console whoever is sick and whoever is suffering. And through the sacrament of reconciliation, Jesus forgives our sins, and so thereby he is healing our soul. The effects of this healing is to restore our relationship with God. And when the obstacles of sin are removed, we can therefore come closer to God, and we can come closer to the church. But we know that the healing presence of Jesus is not limited to just these two sacraments of healing. What are we here today? We're here today to thank God for so much. And in Thanksgiving, we are here to celebrate the meaning of Thanksgiving, which is the Eucharist. We are here to celebrate the fact that we know God is near us. God is with me. God is here with us today. And in the Eucharist, Jesus offers us his grace to those who are ready to receive him, to strengthen us, to heal our souls. The same Jesus who healed the, healed the crowds in the gospel story today is the same Jesus who is present to us in the Eucharist. He is present in the Eucharist personally, totally, body, blood, soul, and divinity. We can talk to him. We can gaze upon him. We can receive him and then ask him for his help with his healing. And as David goes and through his lamentations in the Psalms, he comes to that conclusion. He, doesn't, he knows that no, he has nothing to fear because God is always with him. And he know, we know the same is true for us today. God is always with us. 
And so as we approach this altar, Jesus is present to us in Holy Communion. We need to ask him to show us his presence, to give us his healing grace that we need today and ever. Let us now offer our needs and the needs of the world to, to see the Lord who is always new. For all members of the church, may God look with favor upon us and grant us every grace and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For civil authorities, may the Lord guide them in their efforts to protecting human life in all stages. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Who are sick, may the Lord grant them healing and comfort from their suffering. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of us here, may the grace of the Holy Spirit guide us to a life of holiness in all we say and do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for all who have died in the light of faith. And remember especially the intention of today's Mass, Helen Clissards. May God grant them peace and eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our personal intentions, which we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear and answer the prayers that we have brought to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray that brothers and sisters in my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name. O oh God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of those sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, and send down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks for it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. 
Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Alfred, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, and now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I love you, and I wish you to come to my earth. I always say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who are unable to be with us today or unable to receive the Eucharist at this time, I'll now pray a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament, and I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all within me his holy name.
Chris. Buddy Chris. Buddy Chris. Buddy Chris. Buddy Chris. Buddy Chris. Amen. Buddy Chris. Buddy Chris. Buddy Chris. Let's pray. <clears throat> May this divine sacrifice be offered and received. Fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that will last forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God give you the kingdom of the bread. And do thou bring us the heavenly hills. By the power of God, cast us in on Satan, and all the evil spirits, who crown throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Have a good evening, everyone. You too, Father.